All right, so this is the first um, eggplant that I want to show you, and that is basically, I've selected now from 35. What I started with, I started with uh, 400 in little seed trays. And out of that, I ended up with about 45 that I thought were really strong, thick stem, and I was really, really happy with those. And we planted those into pots, and you probably can see those, that footage. I might put some a little bit on top of this video, but it's from the, uh, the, the Farmer's Journal uh, videos. And literally, I ended up with 45, planted them all in here, and then I pulled out about 10, because they were like, adversely, really badly affected by, like right away from the start, by fungus and uh, this... I don't know what it's called, but it's like a, a yellow, maybe some of you from India watching this might know the name, the common name, um, or the Latin name even. It's like a ladybird, but this one actually eats plants, you know. And so I just ripped them out right away and I said, that's okay, that, that showed me that, you know, they, they obviously like the taste of that leaf. So you can affect, genetically speaking in a way, you can affect... Um, what you what's going to be showing up in the future generations by actually um, just culling out stuff that you don't really want and you know this one might have let's just say more bitter kind of taste in the leaves and that's um, what these creatures don't really like or there could be fungal resistance there's a bit of fungus here but we've just gone through the monsoon uh, time and this is why their holes are in here as well this is actually the monsoon rain just blasting away at the plants and a little bit of fungus is actually amazing that's you know normally i mean they're doing really really good so i've selected six six plants here and i just put a this is what i had a bit of sellotape around it a marker pen with red means these are my best so i have six uh, bare minimum population that you need for eggplants is about you can get away with one but 6 to 15 is kind of good because this is a self-pollinator it doesn't have a protruding stigma that means that the stigma the female part is it's encased always with uh, five anther combs is it five or six let me just see it doesn't really matter five or six and it protects that stigma from cross-pollination because the pollen in those anther cones are basically um, dropping pollen onto the female part and then it fertilizes the ovaries and it gets seeds and then it's fertilized and the whole job is done um, and nothing can from the outside a bee can't come along and drop some pollen on it because the, the stigma is not protruding so that means that we only need one plant we can get away with one but better to save seeds from about six even better to save from 15 and even better from even a larger number. So I'm gonna have to still mix some of my medium ones. I'll show you now a quickly a medium variety. What I like is as well, just quickly, I mean, already I have two eggplants on there and I just wanted to bring your attention to this marker pen here. It's because there's one or two people who just come in at night with a torch, with plastic bags, I'm told, and they just help themselves to the garden. F food is amazing. And so I'm marking, marking them because we're after the seeds and they really just don't take them then, which is... Um, and I'm leaving like other things uh, for them, you know, stuff that I don't care about so much. So what I am going to do is I'm going to add some of these as well to... Um, I was thinking lately actually put them into uh, the population as well because when we're giving these now to farmers in the north, of India they may have different pests and diseases and this then gives them a bigger kind of gene pool to select from um, if, if I was just doing this for my own private garden I would just be sticking with those six and say hey that's that's good enough and um, you know I would know that these six plants would set me up really well for for the future generations uh, of my eggplants in this location Uh, so don't don't make the mistake to think now that like for instance there are other crops like for instance sweet corn 
where you need like 200 uh, plants. Brassicas are like that as well. Um, it's just with uh, things like eggplants, um, lettuces, peas, beans. They don't need a high population, as I mentioned, because of the self-breeding aspect, uh, the selfing aspect of those plants. So that's cool. We have those to select from. We have an eggplant coming here. I don't know if you can see that on the camera. But we are, we are, it's late in the game now. We are like at the two, three months stage now. And they're still looking healthy-ish enough. Now let's just see which one. Um, so we have a good few here. I mean, we've tons, tons of little plants. I think that one, let's just take a look at that fella there. All right, so here he is. And basically, I did not mark this one, and you can see it's actually now, it's not looking so bad anymore. It, it looked a lot worse, and I took off a lot of the leaves. And the new ones that are coming back, I take off the leaves because I don't want it to spread onto the other ones uh, anymore that much. But even at that, like there are some that are right next to it, and even with the, the, the problems, we're not getting any more um, diseases. All right, so this all, all of this is actually leaves that have been munched or have some form of uh, problem, a little bit of fungus, things like that. But actually, this plant here is going to be a plant that I'm just going to let it make fruit and I'm just going to give those fruit to people. And literally, we will get, per plant, be about six or eight uh, fruit and we're gonna mark all those and we'll get a lot of seed that way from, from maybe I'll probably end up selecting from about 10 plants only um, like the best of the medium ones and, and the best of those five or six that I had as well but I'm not gonna use it as a selection plant um, and as it gets bigger and stronger it may even recover from all these uh, bad things and still give us a, a crop so we don't want to waste anything and but that's something you want to also bear in mind is that uh, generally speaking do the selection uh, kind of like at the beginning stages when when you like after you noticed a bit of disease coming now there's two other things that can affect uh, your selection process and that's basically well, does the plant have a big, huge stone under its root? Is that uh, maybe preventing it from taking up uh, as many nutrients as other plants? Is that why it's getting sick? Which is not the case in this, in this area. Uh, the other thing is, well, maybe it's not getting enough sunlight, which is also not the case. A third thing that could affect it is, well, maybe it has a banana growing right next to it. And is that maybe rubbing some of the nutrients away? So you have to also consider those few factors um, before you make your selection. That's why on large, large scale selection processes, what they do is they do a grid system whereby you split your field into six areas and then you would take um, the best few from each of those six areas because then you're assured that, well, it's, it's you know, sun or stones or the soil, the lack of nutrients does not affect it because you're gonna get the best out of those six areas rather than the best out of one huge field which could all be you may notice that in that corner they're all growing really great so that's it that's that's the process of selection i hope i didn't give too much information i hope you find it useful and uh, now i want to talk a little bit more about what we're doing with the plant breeding making a new variety now doesn't that look like a, that looks like an amazing amazing eggplant plant and this is actually a new variety that we are breeding at the moment so i have to do a bit of explaining so what i was selecting for mainly was from the very beginning normally breeders actually do uh, pest resistant disease resistance in a later stage but i did it from the very beginning i just got lucky and for taste i didn't care much about what the, the damn thing looked like whether it was whatever shape it was if it tasted good if it was disease resistant i'm i'm good with that you know that's good enough i don't care what it looks like when i eat it now so what i did is i selected out of 43 plants and do you know what i'll, I'll put a bit of footage in now okay from last year um if i have anything that is worthy of putting in it might be just a picture or something but it might even be a little clip of a video just showing you those plants just right now all right, so I want to talk a little bit about this eggplant here as well. 
there is this is a little bit complicated so let me just explain I had 43 eggplant plants they're all f3 at this stage now I've done some breeding with it already and originally it was a wide long one and a, a short purple one and so what I got is I got some short purple now in the f3 still showing up f3 we have small purple crooked purple like more like that and then we have long white that's what seems to be showing and then of course the the leaf structure is slightly different and different uh, things as well and what I've done is I've selected those two that were disease resistant against this this type of fungus and also I basically tasted um, all of them and the ones that tasted nice and sweet I selected and the ones that had disease resistance on the F3 if that makes sense. Now I left these two so I have something to show as well but I also wanted to um, taste these two because I didn't have a chance to get around to that. So I, out of 43 plants I ended up with um, two that are really tasting good and these two as well which I'm going to start tasting now as soon as they turn yellow because I want to I want to get the seeds so if I cut them now that wouldn't be a good idea and they will soon when the seeds are ripe turn yellow um, and then I can actually basically maybe discard them all together or maybe use them for my next generation now I think I hope that was okay um, I can't remember what, what I was taking videos of. Maybe it was something interesting. Anyway, so what I selected from then was a a crooked sweet eggplant, crooked white, I think it was. But the taste was just amazingly sweet. So I, out of 43, I took that one and a long white, also good taste. Um, in January 2017 I got those. These are F2 uh, varieties that I have. So then I could very soon when we're done with this egg, eggplant population I'm gonna of course grow these and keep going. But luckily I had a, a bit of a an accident. When I was growing these I was also growing the the previous generations of all those uh, all that heirloom varieties that are growing now that I just showed you in the crop improvement and one of them didn't it cross somehow by accident and so I have now this generation this one and another plant over there and it's showing two different traits and I'm gonna just quickly show you uh, what I mean with that first of all let me just say that this one is the most perfect eggplant you will probably ever see ever considering that it's gone through monsoon rain it's gone through you know hot humid it has no diseases. It's perfect. It's like it's like a dream come true for a plant breeder. I should just select. I'm gonna select just from this one and keep this as a separate line. So just because it's self-pollinating, I'm just gonna. I have it here. Look, look. There you go. It's actually this is like F F3 now because it's crossed in with the white. So we have some purple. We have some white, and I have I have two of them here growing away so I should have enough seeds I'm just keeping them I'm hoping that I will get if that one tastes sweet I'm just gonna select from that line and then be done with it I'll have the perfect eggplant anyway let me just show you the other one right so by no means am I gonna discard these ones if that one is if that that variety that F3 really works out well that cross between the um, that heirloom the old heirloom variety and the the last year's f2 generation the new variety that i'm making this one here then of course i'm going to keep that as a separate line but i'm not discarding these I'm, i've worked on these quite hard and we're getting there now this is the brother or sister or hermaphrodite or whatever you want to call it of that one uh, that's doing so well but you can see it's not doing that greatly and the way i know by the way maybe you are wondering how do i know that this is actually you know in an accidental cross well because it has first of all the seeds couldn't have mixed uh, there's no way I could have gotten some of these seeds into the original population that would be another way of having this one accidentally get in there but the reason I know it's a cross is because I'll tell you now in a second but you can also tell that it's definitely different to the old heirloom variety because it has instead of a green stem it has a red stem and 
like over the last few years I've noticed that um, I think red is actually a purple is dominant over green so I'm not seeing any kind of uh, variation in any of the old heirloom everything's staying pretty much true to type so I'm good with that but this is why I'm thinking this could work because first of all you notice uh, this one is complete white um, but I, I had complete white showing up as well as you can see with these guys but what I'm finding interesting is that I have a round one here so roundness uh, I never had any of those showing up in the old 43 population um, of last year of that new variety so I'm thinking that definitely it has crossed with that and so that's that's a bit of information that is really handy to know but um, I'm not going to use this one to be honest uh, if you remember I said I want to have something that tastes good and literally is disease resistant and this has been attacked like crazy whereas the other one hasn't so because out of that one plant because it's it's a uh, it has been crossed so much you know it has a lot of diversity in it it's not like a a one line like the old varieties where we've where we've kind of literally taken a a cross and selected for the traits that we wanted you know over several generations up to 12 generations um, this one over there, the really good one, has all this diversity still in it because it has all these different uh, crosses mixed in. So the gene pool is mixed up really, really well. Whereas with the old heirlooms, it is usually pretty much set. So that's it, concludes the video. A lot of talking, of course, because I'm, I need to explain these things. I wanted to show you around a little bit, uh, my selection process, my plant breeding processes, processes as well. <coughs> Gotta go to drink some water. And yeah, so that's it. Um, hope you enjoyed it and hope to see you in the next one as well.